Quitting is making an exit out of what no longer serves you and your purpose. Quitting is a form of respect for your time, effort, and abilities. Quitting is a marker of your commitment to the true vision of life you have for yourself. And quitting is a trust in your ability to accomplish your goals in ways that you haven't even imagined yet. Hi, my name is Eddie Tala, and on this channel, we live deliberately, chase our curiosities, and meet ourselves on our own terms. So today's topic is on quitting. And I've really been thinking about it for a while. Earlier this year, in January, I wrote a blog post for a wellness brand called Inside Then Out. And it was called, Ask These Questions Before You Quit Anything. It was basically meant to be a guideline to help you discern whether or not you should quit. And it was organized around five central questions. Is my potential being limited or being brought out? Is this not the right fit? Or have I just not found my place within it yet? If I let this go, am I going to try to come back for it? Am I being changed for the better or for the worse? And finally, why am I here? I'll link the full article in the description box below, but today I don't really want to talk about whether or not you should quit. I want to give you more conviction in your decision to quit. A book that has been on my nightstand for a while now is How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams. There are so many gems in this book and I've been sharing some on my Instagram page, but I particularly want us to read a section out of a chapter called Recognizing Your Talents and Knowing When to Quit. The smartest system for discerning your best path to success involves trying lots of different things. Sampling, if you will. For entrepreneurial ventures, it might mean quickly bailing out if things don't come together quickly. That approach might conflict with the advice you've heard all your life. That sticking with something, no matter the obstacles, is important to success. Indeed, most successful people had to chew through a wall at some point. Overcoming obstacles is normally an unavoidable part of the process. But you also need to know when to quit. Persistence is useful, but there's no point in being an idiot about it. Sometimes persistence is foolish. Sometimes it's just a stubborn rigidness that is leading you to stagnation and burnout. And sometimes it doesn't let you actually go on the path that is going to lead you where you want to be. I think a large part of our resistance towards quitting is the negative emotions that we feel around it. So for the video today, what I'm going to be doing is helping you reorient those negative perceptions around quitting so that you can do it with stronger conviction and make sure that you stay until the end because I'm gonna be sharing my personal four-step strategy that turns quitting into a winning tactic. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to master being you. Shame. A lot of times we feel shame for leaving things incomplete or not reaching a finish line, but you have to understand that sometimes success is in embracing the fact you didn't get what you wanted, but you learned what you needed. We turn shame into pride by acknowledging and celebrating that we had the courage to leave what was no longer working. Be proud of yourself for making the decision to go where you can be more aligned with your purpose. It's also important to note that feelings of shame and embarrassment don't exist unless you embrace it. Nothing is embarrassing unless you act like it. So don't. Have pride in what you've done, who you've been, and where you're going. Defeat. Whenever you feel defeated, you need to remember this. It's not you versus the task. It's not you versus the situation. That task or situation is a tool that is bringing you knowledge, that is showing you opportunities for growth, and that is leading you to where you need to be. This is how you turn defeat into empowerment. When you quit, you are empowered with information that can help you actualize the full potential of who you are. 
Look at it like this. You're fueling your creative arsenal with new knowledge, information, and skills that can help you in new contexts. Free yourself of any definition of success that is not defined on your own terms. When you tie yourself to the expectations of other people, you are keeping yourself in a cage. Don't use the prospect of acceptance or external validation to keep you tied to a reality that you would not opt into in any other circumstance. Whenever you do this, you are actively choosing misery over your own mission. Also, just because you've already invested time, money, effort into something doesn't mean you should stay there when it's no longer working. That's just like saying if you're standing in rising water, you might as well stand there and drown because you're already there. It is never too late to leave and start again on the right path. Free yourself to discover success on your own terms. Free yourself to explore who you are outside of the bounds of expectation. Free yourself to emerge into new possibilities of what you can do, where you can go, and who you can be. So all in all, when you quit and feelings of shame, defeat, and entrapment arise, remember that on the other side of that, you can also feel proud, empowered, and liberated by your decision to leave what was no longer working. How else does quitting make you feel? And what would you like to turn that feeling into instead? Let's talk about it in the comments. So my personal four step strategy to turn quitting into a winning tactic is real. Reflect, educate, accelerate, and launch. Reflect, ask yourself the following questions. What have I learned from this experience about myself, about my goals, and about the situation at large? Define for yourself the point of no return. Otherwise, the moment that you decided to quit, what was happening there? How did you feel? How did it arise? And what can you do to avoid this in the future? Finally, create a list. One side has a list of lessons that you've learned and you're gonna take with you, and another list, actions that you're going to avoid and always going to remember. Keep this with you so that you know what to do and what not to do at your next attempt. Educate. Ask yourself this question, what do I need to learn moving forward? Who has done what I seek to do and what tactics have they used to get where I want to be? This is where you go out and do a lot of research, go to YouTube, go to Google, read books, go to LinkedIn, go to anywhere that you can get any form of information that can help you on your journey. Reach out to people, take a course, do what you need to do to get the information you need. There's a very high possibility that the reason why you were not able to achieve what you wanted to do the first time was because you lacked the information that you needed. So it's your responsibility to make sure you go out there and get the tools you need to move forward. That guidance is everything. Accelerate, create a ramp for success for yourself. You're gonna do this by first defining where you were, where you are, and then where you want to be. And then what you're going to do is make sure you have a list of action items that you're going to make sure you accomplish within a certain time frame. For instance, you could say, I want to do A on a daily basis. I want to do B on a monthly basis, C on a weekly basis. Really make sure that you're specific about things that you're going to do to create a new cadence for yourself to head towards the goal that you're looking towards. And having this as a guideline that you can reference can also allow you to make tweaks along the way so that you can adjust based off of the new information that you have. And that way you're going to be able to assess what's working and what's not working in real time and make the adjustments you need to when it's necessary. And finally, launch. Start. Don't let planning be a form of procrastination and don't let fear of failure stop you from even beginning. While it's important for you to make sure that you decompress and re-strategize after leaving one situation, it's also important that you actually act and execute on your new plan. Quitting doesn't mean you stop trying. It just means you try differently. 
Thank you so much for watching, for listening. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.